Hi everybody, welcome to Haven on Earth. I am currently in town attempting to get some internet while Jason's back at home working on his wood splitter. I hope you're having an awesome week. Our week was a little bit odd, only due to weather. Monday through Thursday we were under an ice storm warning, so not a whole lot got done because travel was restricted. But we did go to our local hardware store and found our walls, which were then delivered on Friday. And over the weekend, we made some progress on the interior. We also made progress outside, and I just wanted to take a minute to show you. The ducks decided to move out of the goat pen. They found themselves a new spot. So I guess this will be the new duck pond area. We'll just make it bigger for them. Our experience with ducks is that they love water, obviously which can lead to very dirty, messy, muddy duck pens. But they've been roaming freely since we moved here. And this being their new area is a drainage ditch and they can make that as messy as they want it to be. Ducks lay eggs just like chickens. They're bigger and richer, but unlike chickens, ducks don't scratch up your seeds or your garden. They'll eat the bugs for you. They do like to eat lettuce. Overall, they're much less destructive than chickens. And we moved our camp again this week, basically to get internet. We had our camper where the house is for most of the time we've been here, but we wanted to move it to get out of their way so they could build the house. So we moved it into this back corner and we have not had internet for almost a month. But when we had the camper over here where the house is, we did get some internet with our jet pack. And so we moved the camper back over here, hoping to get internet again. We're starting on the inside. The first boards are being cut for the walls. And here are our boards. We went with a tongue and groove and it's called Ponderosa Pine. And they sell it at our local hardware store here in Salisa, Oklahoma. We are going with 16 foot by eight inch boards. And the way that I priced it out, it did come out very similar to the tongue and groove that you can get at Home Depot. And the Home Depot boards come in six inch by 12 foot boards and these are eight inch by 16 foot boards and in going with our local hardware store we can support a local business and avoid a 45 minute trip to fort smith especially in case if we need more boards or tools which is where the guys are now because we don't have the proper tool to cut around the outlets. So they went to go get a jigsaw. It may seem like common sense to people who have experience with building, but Jason and I don't. But to finish the walls or to put them up, we're using an air compressor with a nail gun and we're using finishing nails, not braided nails and the finishing nails are not leaving hardly a mark at all looking great and that's Jason's first time using a nail gun so we are on a pause while we get the right tools but I'm thinking this wall is going to go up very quickly 
and we're starting with the bedroom wall because it does not have any windows and it's pretty much just the one outlet that we have to cut around so we can get good measurements practice with the nail gun and make some fast progress so here's the tool that they went to go get it's a jigsaw with a fine blade and then after measuring appropriately you can use a drill and drill a hole in the corner and then use the jigsaw to cut to the hole and then over and then back up. So Jason and I did that one last night. They actually found this tool at the pawn shop along with the nail gun. And Bob said it was his first time being in a pawn shop and I think it was my first time here too. But Jason's actually made friends with the guy and he gave us the nail gun for 25 bucks off. So the pawn shop can be a great place to get good tools. This came in a box with the instructions and finishing nails. And we didn't have to buy new. He told us that if either tool didn't work, we could just bring it back. They say we have a wall. <gasps> oh my God. Oh, that's pretty. Are they easy to install? Only one has been tricky. Oh, it fits perfect. Okay, that's good. Yep. I'll, uh, does this gonna be why I'll be It's definitely been a week full of goats. We got them this round bale, January 16th. And they have some left, but they've pretty much eaten it all. So we've been making sure that they have enough bedding, making sure that they, their hay feeders are full, and then what they waste around the bottom, I've been collecting that to put in the muddy areas. Goats don't like their feet to be wet, and there's a reason for that is because they can get hoof rot. So any hay that they waste from their hay bale, we just use it for bedding, for warmth, and to put in their pen where it's muddy. So really nothing goes to waste. They're soaking up the sun after the cloudy, cold, icy week we had. I also think it happens to be morning nap time and I'm interrupting their naps. It definitely looks like morning nap time to me. Harley's face is buried in the hay. And Cheyenne and Gypsy. There's Abigail. And Archie and Tinkerbell. Well, a sleeping goat is a good goat. Nobody's pushing on fences, pushing on gates, hollering for food. Nice and peaceful. So here is the view from the front door after day one on the interior. We almost have a full living room wall. Looks beautiful. And we almost have a full bedroom wall. This is the first wall that they worked on. And we're not going all the way to the top yet because we're going to wait for Billy to do the ceilings and see where that leaves us. But here is one bedroom wall with the ponderosa pine. And I think it looks just beautiful. And the living room wall. And then last night, Jason and I attempted to do one full wall, just the two of us. And we did make great progress. We just ran out of daylight. So it's almost to the top. We also started on this bedroom wall and we're hoping to make more progress today. The electrical is roughed in in the entire house, but it's not hooked up to the utility pole. 
So we currently do not have electricity in the house. When we do use electricity, it's coming from the plug that our camper is wired into the pole. So we only have one plug that we can use. So like when we're moving between tools, we have to plug and unplug, plug and unplug. So that's the main reason that we can only work when we have daylight, because we don't have any lights in here. So here is a little tour after day one of working on the interior. The north wall or garden window wall is almost completely finished. We have one board in on the east living room wall. We moved our mini split system inside, which part will go inside, part will go outside, and it's going to be installed on that wall. We have our water heater in here, and that will be installed where it is within a cabinet. And then we moved our stove and our fridge in here, and that's where they'll go. We have our south or bedroom wall almost completely finished, and then our tub and our toilet. We have our light fixtures ready to go. Our ceiling fans with lights, kitchen light. We have one board in the east bedroom wall. And then this wall behind the door in the living room slash kitchen is almost finished. Jason and I will continue to work on the walls tonight until it gets dark. And then this week we're hoping to make progress with the ceiling and with the plumbing and septic, which we are waiting for Billy, the guy who built our house, to do. And hopefully once the ceiling goes up, we can get the ceiling fans and lights installed, and perhaps the electric will be ready to go. And that will be really awesome. Once we can get the electric hooked up, we can install our mini split system, which will give us heat, and we can install our lights. And with light and heat, we can actually do work in here past sunset. And that'll give us so much more time to do things. And that is absolutely what we've been waiting for. Once it's dark and we can't work outside anymore, there's not much to do in the camper. And there is not a lot of space. Like it's very hard for two people to move at once in the camper. Having the house with heat and lights will give us a ton of stuff to do. The status of the raised garden beds. I've started layering them and I'm hoping to make a lot of progress with that this week. I have all my materials here and I'm just putting cardboard down at the bottom and then sticks, twigs, and wood chips on top of that. Just a thin layer, not a thick layer. And then leaves on top of that. What you doing, baby? <laughs> Are you too funny? And on top of the leaves, then I will put animal bedding, the goat bedding, the rabbit bedding. Those are cold manures, so I can put them right in the garden beds. And then I will top the beds with compost from my lovely compost pile that I had ordered. And then I will cover all of the beds with leaves or animal bedding, which is gonna protect the soil. And here's Cherokee, my little garden helper, chomping on her celery. And she had a carrot earlier. And Cherokee is my little garden helper because she's helping to make compost for our garden beds along with my mother's horses. They've been bringing me horse manure, which I'm turning into compost. My current system is not effective. And so I've decided with research that I'm going with a three bin method. So I'm going to be building three bins. When the first bin is full, then you turn it and move it into the second bin and then so and so forth. When the second bin is full you turn it and move it into the third bin 
and within four to six weeks I should have some pretty great compost of my own. With all the moisture we've had lately, we have a lot of mud. I haven't been in the greenhouse yet this morning. Curious to see what the temperature is. But we have some germination. Mustard greens, lettuce, collards, radicchio, more lettuce, butter crunch on the right, and then rocky top from Baker Creek on the left. Butter crunch lettuce is one of my favorites. It's super crunchy and crisp without having a strong flavor. And it grows really well in our area. And I was able to grow it really well in Texas. Down here, oh my goodness, my favorite. Blue curled scotch kale and scarlet kale. They're so delicious and so beautiful. I, I literally will never probably eat store-bought kale again. Homegrown kale to me is delicious. And then here we have some giant noble spinach and long-standing spinach and one little Swiss chard. And then the last tray we have some cabbage, red cabbage, and broccoli. Broccoli on the right. Everything looks great. So nothing appears to have frozen during our ice storm. The seedlings look fine. They germinated fine. I don't have any heaters or anything in here. I did have this plastic cover over them just for extra heat, but it was not enclosed. And then I ordered one from Amazon but it is not the right measurement and it literally ripped while I was trying to get it out of the box. It's 53 degrees right now and in the greenhouse it's 88. And it's nice and warm in the greenhouse because it's sunny outside and I've had everything closed up. But if I needed to, if I, if I felt it was too hot for the seedlings, I have the back window and then the front door that I could open. I think after the cold temperatures that we've had, that the seedlings will soak up the sun and 88. Some lettuces and brassicas don't like constant hot temperatures, but this is a pretty rare 88 degrees in there. Normally it fluctuates between 40 and 50. These pieces are so big, I don't know what the splitter can do. Look at these enormous logs that Jason just brought home. He said these are the small ones. And he said he's gonna go back with a dumpster and have the guy load these logs into the dumpster with the guy's tractor. We certainly wouldn't be able to lift these by ourselves. And he said there's many more there where he just got these from. Thanks for watching everybody. I'm gonna go home now and continue to work on the walls and I'm hoping to have a video out soon with more progress. Hopefully we'll get the ceiling and the lights and the heat in place and then we'll be rocking and rolling. I hope you guys have an awesome week. Thank you.